Welcome to the GSMC Pets Podcast, the show that caters to pet lovers of all kinds. We'll talk about pets on social media, pets doing amazing things, and how to take care of the pets in your life. Whether your pet is a dog, a cat, a llama, hamster, reptile, or something more exotic, you'll find educational and entertaining information on the GSMC Pets Podcast. to the GSMC Pets Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. I am your host, Samantha Melvin, and I'm really hoping that you guys will enjoy today's episode because, well, we're going to be talking about something that I really love and that is also very relevant to my household right now, and that is pet birthdays. So, why why do I want to talk about this today? Why is it so relevant? Well, I have not one, but two pets that have a designated birthday for April 1st. And that would be baby Regina and Grandma Cookie. Now, what do I mean when I say designated? Well, we only know that Regina was born around April, and, well, for Cookie, we know the exact date for her, but we're just going to lump them together just because we're good pet parents and stuff, I guess. So, the major question I have today is, what exactly do pet birthdays entail? And we'll definitely cover that, especially for those of you that are also trying to figure out, well, I want to do a celebration for my pets and have them you know, enjoy themselves. But, you know, I'll also cover some appropriate cakes and food that your pet can have on this special day. Um, also, what are some great gifts for them? What are some places you can take them to for their birthday? And how you can have a safe and fun birthday party. Well, then, we're going to close with something that I really was hoping to talk about soon, and that was sewer gators. Yes, sewer gators. What exactly does a pet party entail? Well, I guess that kind of depends. It depends on your pet's temperament, their personality, their age. There's a lot of stuff going on there. There's a lot of things to juggle. So, for instance, for Cookie, she would probably not have the ideal time if she were to be in this big party with all these other dogs and uh, just things that she didn't really know very well. Because, well, she's she's a very anxious dog, and she gets she gets upset sometimes. So it's better to just kind of take a step back. Her temperament is not perfect for a group of dogs that she doesn't know. Her personality, well, she's kind of a diva. She wants the attention for herself. And then, you know, age, like, she's going to be 14 years old this year. So that means pretty much she could be, she's not going to need that extra excitement because she also has a heart murmur. We don't want to get her too, you know, too stressed out. And that's something that'll happen with, you know, a a birthday party sometimes. You know, your pets will get stressed out. And, you know, that's something to definitely consider. Now, you consider Aizen over here. And Aizen is, like, sitting next to me as I'm I'm recording, actually. But for Aizen, he is a very um, nervous cat. Well, not really nervous, but he doesn't really like to be around people. And he turned 13 this year. And probably the perfect thing that we could have done, well, we actually did. We know he loves tuna. And um, tuna is not bad for your cats. It's, you know, it's totally natural for them to eat tuna or any kind of fish. But um, for him, we got a nice little plate of tuna for him. And we we basically just started singing happy birthday to him. And then the... The plate of tuna was, like, right over his head, and he was getting very frustrated because he wanted it. So he started trying to climb up our legs and stuff. It's it's very cute watching him act like a little kitten sometimes when it comes to that. But 
I mean, the worst idea that you could ever have is planning like a big old cat party with cats that are very territorial and very um and very set in their ways. I I guess that's a nice way of putting it. But cat parties are probably not the best idea unless those cats know each other or the cat's personality and temperament uh allow for a <laughs> allow for a party like that. Now Eisen's birthday party this year, as I mentioned, was extremely casual. February 2nd, Groundhog's Day. I mean, it's cold outside and, you know, it's just ugly winter. So just being able to give him that, because he hasn't been able to, like, go out and, you know, see the world and smell the world lately. Like, that is something that he really appreciated. And we can tell that. But, you know, there are some people that don't have enough of that, you know. And this kind of borders around the dangers of um, <laughs> people planning the pet party for their pets, but in reality, it's a party for the humans. So you can actually check out on the um, online scene, like just go for a general search. And like one of the first things that I find is like the dogbakery.com. And yes, they do have some really good themes for their pets, but the first one that they pull up and this is, I don't know, I don't know what they're thinking, an art party. And they have a picture of this little chihuahua wearing, well, that's dressed up as Frida, um, Frida Kahlo. And just, I don't think that pets really would enjoy being dressed up, and there's really nothing else that you can really talk about. There's, this theme only talks about, like, dressing up. And it seems to me like, Maybe the guests are dressing up, you know, the guests' dogs are dressing up, and it's like, oh my gosh, it's so cute. Happy birthday. And there's really not much... Clothes are very constraining for pets. Some of them are fine with, like, you know, a nice little sweater or something like that, or a shirt. But the pictures that I see on this site for the um, for the pets, like, it looks uncomfortable. Like, it's all baggy and limiting. I just... I just don't see how that would be a good idea for your pet. But there are also things on the site that really do show that it's considering your pet. One in particular is the doggy edition of the American Ninja Warrior, where you have, like, all these obstacle courses and prizes for any achievements that might, you know, happen. And it's just a, you know, a nice way for your pets to expel all of their energy so they don't have to worry so you don't have to worry about going home and your pet is still very, very wound up. Like, this is a perfect way to tire out your pets for that day. And, you know, that's, I think that is a really good theme in case you wanted to really, uh, really draw in your pets and really make it pet-centric rather than human-centric. And again, that's the real danger here. Um, there's also like a pet pampering party where you can massage and groom your dog as you know as like a as a group thing and it's it seems pretty cute like for cookie it would not be ideal because i've told you about the experience with her uh with her grooming it's pretty pretty bad but for other dogs you know that probably is like a wonderful thing for them to do and just Let's see, what else? And, of course, you know, the the theme also falls on to, like, oh, what kind of food are you going to be giving your pets? Well, it all depends. It all depends on what your dog likes, what you have available, um, if you can go out and shop, that kind of stuff. And maybe you could wind down with, an, well, with a movie called Shaggy the Dog, or the Shaggy, oh, <laughs> the Shaggy Dog. Um, and that is a movie with... Tim Allen in it, and I remember when this movie first came out, I never watched it, but it seemed kind of like a very weird, weird movie. I might get around to it. It's a Walt Disney. I can probably go into Disney Plus and find it. But, you know, all these things is how to make your dog happy. And I'll go ahead and say, your dog probably doesn't, you know, definitely doesn't know, you know, the special 
the specialness of their of this day that you're doing the celebration. They just know, oh my gosh, it's a day where I can have all of my pet buddies, or oh, this is a day where I get a treat of my tuna, and oh man, this is going to be really exciting. And they don't even realize that kind of stuff. So, you know, at its heart, pet parties are kind of human centric. But if you are able to make it more focused on, you know, what your pet is doing rather than what you are doing, I think that'll be absolutely perfect for them. Now, I have no idea what I'm going to be doing for Cookie and Regina. They're such different animals. <laughs> Regina is like a powerful little puppy that has so much energy, unlimited energy, it feels like. And then you have Cookie here that just prefers to sleep on your lap all day long or go into her little corner with her blanket and just sleep there. So <laughs> it's a very difficult thing to kind of... Uh, to consider when you look at their birthday falling on the same day for us. Like, how do you manage that? Probably Regina's going to have multiple walks, and Cookie will probably have a lot of treats that'll most definitely spoil her dinner. But, you know, at least we're keeping their personality and temperaments in mind. And, well, I guess we're kind of... Um, stuck doing this kind of stuff too because we can't really you know social distancing and stuff and we have no uh, no idea how long that's going to be lasting for but hey i mean if we can make it work we will definitely make it work and i would absolutely love to see um pictures of your pets at like very pet centric birthday parties and the really cool thing is that we're you know, we're going to be talking about, um, well, pl places that you can take your pets. But again, this is going to be for, for like the future when our um, lockdowns are done, pretty much. But yeah, we'll definitely talk about that. But for the next segment, we are going to be talking about, well, the foods and the cakes that you can get for your pets for their birthday. Now, we'll be right back after these messages. Are you tired of the same old news? Are you sick of the seemingly endless political spin and negativity? The GSMC America Still Beautiful podcast is a weekly news podcast covering all the top positive and uplifting news stories. We cover stories that will inspire, uplift, and remind you of the good in the world. Tune into the Golden State Media Concepts America Still Beautiful podcast to get all the great and positive news stories of today. Download the GSMC America Still Beautiful podcast on iTunes. Stitcher, SoundCloud, Google Play, or anywhere you find podcasts. Just type GSMC in the search bar. And we are back, and we were just talking about what exactly a pet party entails. So, we've already gone through that. You know, all that kind of uh, personality, temperament kind of deal where you need to really consider your pet a little bit more. But, let's move on to the fun stuff. What about, you know, the treats and the food and all that kind of stuff? You know, the not-for-you human but for your pets, you know, dog treats, cat treats, little cakes, all that kind of stuff. And I can guarantee you that somewhere, if you live near a bigger city or, you know, kind of like a hip center, center there may be a chance that you have a dog bakery somewhere. And, I mean, we have multiple ones where we live. And there are so many choices um, to, you know, grab different kinds of birthday cakes for our dogs. But, like, because of the time now, uh, we're pretty restricted in where we can go. So I guess, um, go get your dog birthday cakes at your own risk, maybe? But anyway, I would say that, um, these bakeries will have all that you need, pretty much. And they have them shaped in, like, adorable little, uh, 
like doggy bones or actual. They actually look like real cakes, cupcakes, all that kind of stuff. It, you know, all of them are doggy friendly, and it's so much easier for cats. I feel like because well, they can just have their tuna and be happy, and you can also get them like little bonita flakes, so that they can you know also have a little bit of a fishy taste with their um with their regular food schedule, but. For me, especially now that our resources are limited and I can't really go out, I, I am resorting to probably making the birthday cake for for Reggie and Cookie because I, you know I actually have made treats for for pets before, um, mostly just Eisen because well he has been mainly my pet for uh, for many years. And like I've made treats for him, and I made sure that I followed a recipe. I will admit that I was younger, so I wasn't very particularly careful about what kind of treats I was making for him and what I was making it out of. But you know, there are tons of websites out here that can give you like different tips and what you can do. My major thing, and I always you know try to remember this: there's not going to be any garlic, no onions, no mushrooms, no grapes, especially for your dogs or raisins, anything like that, you know, stay away from because those are, you know, very toxic to dogs. And I believe cats too. But um, there are some websites that I actually uh, did some digging for. And let me see, let me pull up this list again because it was pretty fun. So you can actually go to uh, rover.com slash blog slash dog birthday cake recipes and it will give you a nice list of different treats that you can give your dogs. And they also provide some recipes too, so you can follow them. But check out this layout, actually. This is, this is very, very... I don't know, it's... It just pushes this jealousy of like, hey, I want that too, that sounds really good. So, you can make a cheesecake bites. You can make red velvet cupcakes... Karab mini cupcakes with peanut butter frosting, peanut butter paw print cup uh, cupcakes, and gosh, that seems you know like things that I would want, you know, minus it being called you know little cupcakes and uh, and paw print stuff. But you know, you put a different name to it. It's like, oh man, give me that. I'm gonna eat some of that, but don't do it. Just don't leave it for your pets. And you're, you would be surprised at how awful some of these things taste to humans. But let's see. Um, and of course, I mentioned tuna for the Kit Kat. Um, you want to be very careful about how much you're giving your pets. Because, you know, that could either upset their stomachs or, you know, it, it could, like, cause, you know, an excess uh, weight gain and stuff. So you don't want to do anything that'll, you know, cause them uh, bowel terror. I'll call it that. Um, and also another thing that the that this website um, says is well, and I'm going to quote this: you can make a cake shaped tower of your of their favorite dog treats glued together with dog friendly icing, or you can make a tempting pile of their favorite toys. So again, you know all these very cool things that they can you know that you can improvise, especially during this time when you can't really leave your house, and you know the cake shaped plush dog toy that you can get for them, you can actually do that. Um, You know, that's zero calorie fun, and I guarantee you that they will, that your dogs will enjoy it. And, well, I can't guarantee it, but dogs really do like toys. And I would say that for cats in particular, just let them be. Give them the food, give them the treats that they want, let them relax, but... You know, now I'm really curious. I kind of want to see this, um, what is it? This red velvet cupcakes thing. I want to see what the recipe is like. So let me scroll down and find this. I'm really curious about it now. Let's see. It says that these tasty little cakes get their beautiful color from shredded beets. Ah, apparently beets are good for your pets now. Um, they're perfect for birthdays, valentines, or any... Or any time, really. And you can top with simple cream cheese or yogurt frosting. Or you can pair it with a scoop of your um, doggy ice cream. So, 
I wait, I didn't know there was doggy ice cream. That's something you can also throw into, you know, your table spread for, for their birthdays, right? And let's see. I got to see this recipe here because beets is a very interesting. Now, let's see. Hmm. So it takes about 15 minutes to prep, cook for 20 minutes, and basically it'll yield, whoa, 48 mini cupcakes. So that basically means that you could have a really big dog party, and it would be awesome. Now let's see, for the cupcakes, you have the beets, you have strawberries, you have applesauce, non-fat yogurt, eggs, oat flour, um, carob powder. What exactly is carob powder? I have to figure this out. Um, and let's see, baking powder for the actual cupcakes. And then for the frosting, you can make the, um, well, you'll need non-fat yogurt, cornstarch, a non-fat cream cheese, uh, more strawberries and blueberries for color if and flavor if you like, and then also vanilla extract. And just kind of looking at all these um, pictures of, you know, what it's supposed to look like, I I can guarantee you that somebody is going to accidentally eat one of these. And honestly, looking at the recipe here, I mean, it doesn't seem like a really bad thing, really. So we can say that it's very good for your dogs and also possibly very good for your for your human pets, too. <laughs> so... That, man, I might want to make that. I don't have the rest, you know, the ingredients for it, but there's definitely something I can do. And, you know, I could just go do a quick trip to the Kroger or something like that. It'll be fine. But, you know, there's, they also have little videos on this too, so that if you're not really a good, not really good at following and, you know, just written instructions, you could also just watch a demonstration of it too. And, you know, that's pretty cool. Now, I would have to say that most of the time I'm pretty okay with, uh, with, the these weird little treats. Um, however, most of the time I try to go for, like, more special treats that aren't, you know, as, not as calorie heavy or anything like that, or not too special. I'm... I'm a weird pet mom. I don't know. I don't want to spoil them, and already Regina's a pretty spoiled dog. So I usually go out and get, like, little pig ears or pig snouts. Um, one of my friends is planning on giving us it, a little deer antler so that she can chew on that. Um, Cookie, another thing about Cookie, her teeth are not not doing too well, and we can't really have her get dental work done because, well, she would have to be asleep and... Who knows if she would wake up after that. So we are basically like being very careful about what kind of um, chews that she gets. So in this case, if she's not really into any of these um, baked goods, then we could probably give her some, you know, some wet food and it'll be fine. Actually, she really loves like, this is something you give to your, um, to your sick pets, but um, like a bowl of rice mixed with like chicken broth. She loves it. She will eat it all the time. And when she did get sick one time, um, we gave it to her like a few times and she didn't want to go back to her regular food after that for a while. So that was frustrating. But, you know, a lot of these things, think about what kinds of stuff that your pets like. I mean, a watermelon is a wonderful thing. Like just give them a piece of watermelon and they'll be happy. So anyway, I... There's so much more to say about this, and I want to just continue going through recipes after recipe just to find the perfect thing for Regina and Cookie. But who knows, I might try to take a chance and contact the dog bakery for them. But we are going to take another break, and it's going to be our third segment where we're going to talk about um, pet gifts. So that'll be pretty awesome. And you know, what do you give your pets on their birthdays? Do you give them anything? Or do you spoil them throughout the year? Well, we'll talk about that after this commercial break. Tired of searching the vast jungle of podcasts? Now listen close and hear this out. There's a podcast network that covers just about everything that you've been searching. The Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network is here. 
now. Nothing less than a podcast bliss with endless hours of podcast coverage. From news, sports, music, fashion, cooking, entertainment, fantasy, football, and so much more. So stop lurking around and go straight out to the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. Guaranteed to fill that podcast itch. Whatever it may be, visit us at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter and download us on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Welcome, welcome, welcome back. We just talked about pet food for the party, what you need to do for the party, or what you need to at least consider. Now, let's get to the fun stuff. Pet gifts. Yeah, I said it, pet gifts. So, when exactly are you going to get your pets? Now, this could be a you know a really interesting thing, or it could just be like a you know an everyday thing. Because some people, maybe like myself, Whenever I have the opportunity, I get them a toy. <laughs> no, um, but yeah, I have problems. You know, I see something that I think Regina will like, and I'll be like, I'll take this and put it in my cart. Or, you know, Cookie just likes, you know, eating her snacks, so she'll sometimes steal Reggie's toys and, you know, play with it herself, but, you know, she's very low maintenance, so it's kind of concerning how low maintenance she is. <laughs> but... You know, for the people that do actually reserve this day, you know, their their birthday as a day for giving them treats and and gifts, well, fantastic. I actually have a list for you guys to listen to for um for twenty five gift ideas for your pets. Now I'm gonna go ahead and say some of these things <laughs> you could find it for cheaper elsewhere, but these are just some general ideas. I'm not going to tell you um, pricing or where to get it based on this list, but there are plenty of options for you. Now, for instance, let's see, they have a ton of stuff for um, for Christmas in particular, but, you know, birthdays are like Christmas, right? <laughs> kind of. But, so you can get like a Thermo Snuggly Sleeper Heated bed pe- <laughs> Pet Bed. So, if you are like Cookie, if your pet is like Cookie, then, you know, you'll notice that they're always quite cold. So, you know, for us, we put sweaters on Cookie, we wrap her up in blankets, all that kind of stuff. But, you know, sometimes you just, you know, maybe all the sweaters are in the wash, or maybe you don't have, well, you can't say you don't have the time, but maybe you just don't realize that you need to wrap a blanket around your little guy. Well, you know, the Thermo Snuggly Sleeper um, might actually be a good solution for you. But, you know, you can get it at Amazon.com. I'm not going to say the price. I'm pretty sure you can find better prices elsewhere, but just, you know, some, (laughs) just an option for you. Now, the next thing is like a Lily Dog PJ shirt. And, um, this is a brand, so you know it's going to be costing a lot of money. And, well, I mean, you could also find plenty of dog shirts, dog clothes at a, you know, at a pet store, and it'll probably be for much cheaper. I won't even bother, like, looking at this, you know, this website where they get it, where they, um, are selling this from. Because I just know, based on the price point, I'm not going to be able to afford it. But, you know... In case you're still in the mood for the holiday, for the holidays in general, I mean, it's already April pretty much, but you know, still, what if you wanted to give your cat something special? For instance, a holiday gingerbread cat, um, cat house scratcher. And you know, this is pretty cute. It's one of the, the, um, items that you can get from Chewy.com. So, you know, nice and affordable for you. It kind of doubles as, um, holiday decor. 
which at this time of year does not really, you know, does not really matter, but that is something to consider. You can also get a smart dog collar. What in the world is a smart dog collar? So here's the description here. Oh, and it's listed as fa um, Oprah's favorite things. So you know that it must be good, right? But So this is something that will help keep your favorite pooch healthy and happy with its techie collar that, compare, that comes complete with a GPS tracker and an activity monitor. Wow. I mean, that's super, super useful if you're really into that kind of stuff. I mean... I, I can't even wear my uh, Fitbit, like, on a regular basis, so, I mean, at least, you know, your dog has no choice but to wear it. <laughs> now, yeah. Now, for cats, and I absolutely love this, and this is from Etsy, so, you know, you're going to be helping, like, a local artist. Um, well, you know, local as in, like, your, your online local, but not, like, those big department store kind of places. But it's a sushi cat toy, so... You know, sushi, fish, playing with that idea, you know, tuna with cats. <laughs> It'll keep them very entertained, and I kind of want to get some Verizon now, because it, it looks like it's under $10. Well, then you have to consider um, shipping and stuff. Now, this is if you just want to spoil that dog rotten. An Isabella blush pet bed. And, oh my gosh... <laughs> It is a little a little bed that looks like it's fit for a princess, basically. <laughs> and I will I will say that it's over a thousand dollars, over eleven hundred dollars, over twelve hundred dollars, and I'll stop there. <laughs> so you can decide if you really want to spoil that dog rotten, but you know you'll probably be making payments on it for a little bit. <laughs> There's something that is also quite popular for um, for pet birthdays and just in general. You know, we're following the trend of people taking DNA tests, and you can actually do this for your dog. D for your dog, we're planning on doing this for Regina pretty soon. Because um, we are, we say that she's a pit Boston Terrier mix, and we're almost positive about this. But you know, there could always be something else in there too. Why not? And in the meantime, why don't you do one for yourself? Don't don't get this particular brand because it's only for dogs, but get one for yourself and see, you know, what's interesting about that. But again, this is all about your pets, not about you. And, it's, you know, I'm going to go ahead and say the price. It's one eighty nine, and it's called Embark. It's something that my husband and I will be definitely looking at in the future. Now, I'm going to go ahead and say this This is a big no for us. We've already tried this before. But if your cat is a brave one, you know, there is an automatic cat litter box, which will uh, be self-scooping and will um, be kind of a time saver, I guess. But here's the thing. You have to make sure that your cat is brave. Make sure that it doesn't <laughs> go... Um, start scooping when your cat is in the box, then you have to make sure that you are very regular about um, cleaning out the litter and the um, and the stuff that they scoop out because, you know, that can get quite disgusting quite fast. And, I mean, it'll... It's just so bulky looking. But I guess it's prettier looking than most litter boxes, but I... I mean, now you can even get, like, the little, um, cabinet set. You can just, um, put the litter box in and there's a little, uh, opening where your cat can come in. But, you know, that's another, that might be another gift you can consider. But just for my own experience, the automatic litter boxes are, you know, <laughs> they're kind of difficult. Not to operate, but just to maintain. Now, um, you can also do, like, hide-and-seek plush toys for your doggos, um, which can also be cheap. Um, now, there are also dental treats that you can get for them. And, you know, this is another Chewy.com purchase that you can do. And um, I would say that, you know, 14 bucks would be reasonable for this kind of thing. So, in addition to the dental treats, 
there's also a slow feeder dog mat for food and treats. So basically, make your pet slow down in their eating. We had a problem with this with Regina, actually, and she was just always mowing down on all of her food for a very long period of time. She was just so excited to eat her food. And this is, goes the same thing for, for Aizen as well. Um, you know, if your pet eats too fast, then it'll probably come up one way, and it will not be pretty. But just this kind of thing will help uh, slow down this um, this eating habit. And, I mean, there are also little dog bowls, too, that you can use. Um, but in addition to that, there are interactive cat, cat toys. Um, let's see, a shower wand attachment, which, um, if you, if you have, like, a you know, a shower head attachment already. I don't really see the point in this, but hey, if you don't, this might be a good thing to, you know, to invest in. Because, um, honestly, bathing Regina in cookie is a lot easier with that shower head. And you do not want to spend $32 on a dog bowl. Sorry. No. I'm going to say I veto this for you. Now, you can also do, like, a heated cat bed, too, in case, you know, your little... Your little man like Mr. Eyes and just likes to be nice and warm and cuddly. Um, but, you know, again, always think about the pricing here. And let's see, a dog jacket for $118? No way! Okay, no way! <laughs> um, there's also a pagoda pet bed. And I... I would not pay that much money for it. <laughs> Um, but there's also a corduroy, corduroy bow tie that you can get, um, little turkey and cranberry crunchy cat treats, let's see, airline approved pet carriers, which, you know, if you travel a lot, that'd be awesome, um, more dog sofas, a quilted blanket, all that kind of stuff. And all of these things, you know, are, are actually pretty fantastic for you, if you're willing to, you know, fork over the money for that. <laughs> and for some of you, sure. But again, I'm going to insist, do not spend $32 on a dog bowl, unless it's like completely <sighs> indestructible, then don't spend that much money on a dog bowl. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm telling you, I'm demanding that you, commanding that you don't do that, but it just does not seem reasonable to me. But anyway, whew, that list, I mean, there are other really good lists for um, pet birthday gifts. Um, honestly, sometimes the best gift is, like, getting, you know, a toy that reminds them of one of your first toys that you gave them when they were puppies. And, you know, that's what I usually do for Regina. But, anyway, <laughs> this is a very long section, and I'm so sorry, I just got really into the pet gifts. But, you know, another thing that you can do for your pets is, you know, go take them to the dog store or pet store and have them pick the toys and treats themselves. And... I mean, of course, you can always make your own toys for them as gifts. And, I mean, that's that's, that's kind of like the birthday stuff going on over there. Now, what about, you know, you... Let's imagine that you don't have to be staying in your house for an extended period of time. What if you can actually take your pets somewhere? You know, take them somewhere for their birthday, you know... Like how you take a little kid to the skating rink or something like that. I don't know what kids do these days. But, you know, we'll talk about where you can take your pets after this commercial break. Is weird, odd, strange, or just plain bizarre is really your cup of tea? Then, the Golden State Media Concepts Weird News Podcast will give you that fix. Can't believe it? Well, listen for yourself as we deliver the strangest news you definitely won't find on CNN or Fox. It's the Golden State Media Concepts Weird News Podcast.
So, we have talked about what exactly a pet party is like, what they should be eating, what you can let them eat, and, you know, what kind of gifts that you can give. Like, oh man, my favorite thing in the world is watching, you know, an animal get really excited about a gift of theirs. Um, <laughs> but, all of this is perfectly fine. My question for you is, where are you going to have this birthday party? Good question, right? Well, we could talk about maybe a birthday party at home, you know, low budget, you know, do your own decorations and you have a little bit more freedom on what you can do inside the house. Um, but it's, it's really going to work for like a smaller group of dogs, maybe like four dogs tops. And also it really depends on how many, uh, how many of their humans are there too. So if the party is more about the humans, then it's, you know, going to be a good way to go. But again, this is your dog's or your pet's birthday party. It should be about them, right? Anyway, so maybe we can, like, migrate this little birthday outside to the backyard or to your nice friend's place or your relatives or maybe you can just go ahead and rent a house with a yard a large yard that last thing i'm i'm kind of like in awe about because that's like one of the suggestions i've read about but i don't know some people just really want to put that money in them and that's fine but you know if you have your backyard that is nice clean open then you're gonna have as many dogs as you can that can fit in there and in the meanwhile, maybe the humans are uh, doing a barbecue and sometimes they might sneak some meat at, you know, at one of the dogs, especially the birthday dog. But all of this, it's controlled fun. And that's always the good thing. And it's easier to manage things when it's at your place. Now, it gets more complicated when you go to a dog park. For instance, um, gosh, I... I will be very ashamed to say that when we had Rody, and he was he was full grown and he was a you know kind of a racing dog, like we did not ha have a dog park to go to for him, and we could have driven him somewhere, but he just has the extreme anxiety of just sitting in a car, and just when we finally got Regina, we you know. <laughs> I guess I went down, walked Regina down to the dog park to see, like, you know, what do, what do I need to do? And it was completely empty. It was locked. And I'm like, okay, well, obviously I can't do this. And just, there's a lot of steps. You can't just go to a dog park without being a member of it. And I think that that's something a lot of people don't realize. Or at least, you know, beginning dog owners or, you know, okay dog owners are not aware of this, but you, you can't just walk into a dog park and say, Hey, let me in. No, there's, there's actually a lot of important things. So are, are your pets vaccinated? Are they, do they have like any illnesses? Are they healthy? All that kind of stuff that goes into, well, here, I want to go to this dog park. Can I come in? That's really about it. But if you want to go to a dog park, you are a member of it. It's a beautiful day then you could possibly rent that out as as for the party location. Now, if you cannot rent it out, then, well, if you can't rent it out or you're denied the ability to rent it out, you could always just have a very unstructured, open, open kind of party where you don't really have anything that is, you know, so party-like, you know, maybe like a photo booth or, you know, a birthday cake set up. Like, all those things are extra. You know, things that you would do in your house or a more controlled situation. And a dog park where there are multiple other dogs that may not be in your in your party, well, that's just that's just complete chaos and you can't really do anything about that unless you know everyone there. And chances are you probably don't. Now another thing that you can do. And this is totally related. You could go to a dog-friendly human park. And, I mean, you can go to different kinds. I've... I'm trying to think if I've seen many 
non-dog friendly human parks, but maybe I'm just naive. <laughs> a, a park is a park, guys. <laughs> but if you want to do that, you still need to contact the city council to reserve a space because, well, again, you want to make sure that you are following all the protocols. They know how to get to you if something bad happens, all this kind of stuff. You need to make sure that you are putting your best foot forward to making sure that this is a legal and safe experience for your pets. Now, let's say that you just decided, well, let's go to, let's go be more creative. Let's get these dogs really tired. So you can actually go to an agility course and there are some places, you know, some businesses that do have that, or you can even make it up in your own home. But it's basically like a kid's party where they get to, you know, go over to the skating rink. Like that's what I did when I was a kid. <laughs> we would go to the local skating rink and just skate around in circles for hours. <laughs> but, you know, it's the same idea as, you know, a dog, um, a dog party having an, an agility course. They just go and go until, well, they can't go anymore. It's, it's entertainment, right? And it's managed by, potentially managed by someone else. But if you do it at home, it's going to be managed by you. Now, this, these other things, it's kind of like a, well, this next thing, I guess, not the last thing. This next thing, I wasn't actually convinced that this existed. And it's a dog water park. I would love to see any and all pictures of dogs coming in to a water into a water park for them. It's I have not seen one in my entire life. And if you're lucky enough to go near to live near one, then go right ahead, especially if it's summertime. That is absolutely perfect. Now, there's no decorating, there's no serious planning. You just bring the dogs and then you let them loose. Let them have fun in the in the water park, and then you can just sit back, relax, and just watch them entertain themselves. I mean, again, dog watching is an amazing thing. I mean, I do that with Regina and Cookie a lot of the times, and sometimes they're kind of boring. But it is fun to watch uh, at certain points. Now, you could also, and this is something that I've always wanted to do, but um, going to a dog beach... Yeah. So if you live near a body of water, like a beach or a lake or a river, you could potentially have another location where you can have built in entertainment for your, for your dogs. And I hate that I'm focusing on dogs, but a lot of these things like, well, consider cats, they don't want to be near a body of water unless they have to. They don't want to be like jumping on each other or doing like all kinds of, all kinds of agility tricks. Well, unless your cat's super special like mine, <laughs> but anyway, like all of these things with the beach, like they can just go out, have fun, splash around and the humans can go and enjoy a beach day while the dogs do all kinds of stuff like, you know, putting weird stuff in their mouth, digging holes, splashing in the water swimming, chasing the waves, you know, that kind of dog stuff. <laughs> but, you know, what if you just wanted to stay strictly inside? Because, you know, beaches can be very messy. Like, you hop back into your car and there's sand, like, all in your shoes, and you dump out all the sand, and there's still sand in your shoes. Imagine, you know, all that fur that your cat has, and how much sand is, like, inside their fur now. It's going to be a while before it's all completely gone. So, if you don't want to deal with that, you could go to dog party centers. And those are pretty awesome, actually. And, you know, doggy daycares and pet stores, they might have this for for you to rent out or even to kind of, like, use to showcase, like, some of their, um, <laughs> some of their goods that they're, that they're trying to sell. So, kind of like a marketing, you know, attempt by them. But... A lot of it is just, you know, toys, playing, all that kind of stuff. Again, it's like fun managed by someone else, essentially. But the huge thing is that you just need to know what your pet's like. For instance, Eisen would never want to leave home. So he would be inside 
probably enjoying staring out the window, getting his tuna, you know, maybe getting a really good nap in our bed. You know, just, just know your pets. What makes them the happiest? And this little man over here is just enjoying his little yellow blanket right next to my studio, and he's just sleeping. Like, that is the day for him. <laughs> anyway, we've talked about locations. Now I have to be the, the fun sucker and be like, well, now we got to talk about dog safety in these, you know, in these parties and, you know, pet safety altogether. But come on, it's me. You have to deal with it because... Well, as I said, helicopter bomb. <laughs> anyway, we're going to take another break, and we will chat in a bit. The Golden State Media Concepts Travel Podcast, the show that gives you advice on everything travel. We explore places you've always wanted to go, as well as giving tips for traveling in those places. We'll give you advice on the best sites for travel tips, information, and discounts. Join us as we travel the world, explore cultures, and meet new people. The Golden State Media Concepts Travel Podcast has got you covered. Download the GSMC Travel Podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, Google Play, or anywhere you find podcasts. Just type GSMC in the search bar. Welcome back. And we have been talking about all kinds of pet stuff. Just recently, in this past segment, we talked about where you can go with your pets for their birthdays. And, you know, we had a lot of, what, it was like eight places, maybe, that you could go to. And you could always get even more creative and find something else to do. But we are now going to talk about the most boring thing in the world. Yes, yes, yes. It's not boring, I promise. Uh, dog party safety. Because you need to be safe while you're having fun, right? So, imagine that your one of your pet's companions comes to you and their face is all swollen up and you're not really sure what happened and you show them to your friend, that that's the human of that pet, and we all just start panicking. He's like, what's wrong with this dog's face? Well, you should probably take it to the vet or an emergency vet but if if you ignore it then that's going to be a huge problem because we don't know what's going to happen to the doggo so let's just kind of start from the very top the scenario that i talked about is not ideal at all but there's other other safety things that you need to think about so for instance weather related safety you do not want your pets to go out in, let's say, a thunderstorm. I can imagine that a percentage of those dogs would be running inside, scared of the thunder. Also, you don't want to, you have to be just aware of like, well, what is the weather going to be like today? Is this going to be ideal for a dog party? And this will require you to follow the, the weather channel a little bit more particularly because, well, weather changes so fast these days, right? But, you know, just keep your app open, make your plans based on that, and uh, have backup plans. Because if the weather sucks, then there has to be another thing you guys can do. Now, dog-to-dog -dog interactions this is another kind of thing that you have to think about with safety. And just, just kind of making sure that the dogs aren't getting along. There are going to be some dogs that are bullies. Um, and they cause a little bit of anxiety among other dogs. So you have to find ways to, um, help control the behavior and the, in the environment a little bit more because, well, if one dog is, you know, suffering from serious anxiety because a bigger dog is bothering them, well, you got to do something. <laughs> you can't just spray down the big dog and say, no, bad. Well, some people might do that, but... 
there's a thing called separating and then also um, <laughs> cooling down, like that period of time where you pull that dog away and you're like, okay, no thank you. You need, to, you need to sit here and wait. And you wait maybe like 30 seconds to a minute until the dog is visibly calm. And then you can, you know, let them loose and have those interactions again. But you're always monitoring that because you don't want it to escalate to a dog fight, for instance. Because, well, that's going to be not fun at all. And just before you guys do anything crazy never get in between two fighting dogs never so this is going to be a very difficult thing you're going to have to find a way to separate those dogs as soon as you can before or you know this goes back to like dog to dog interactions be prepared just in case something like, like that is about to happen be aware is the major thing though now one of these things is kind of tied into um, dog-to-dog -dog interactions and dog fights, and that's leash rules. Now, I learned a long time ago that the <laughs> that dogs get very anxious when another dog is coming towards them, and both of them are leashed. Well, that's because that's not how they usually greet each other. Like, they need more movement, and like, probably the first thing that dog usually does is like they kind of curve around into an arc and they start sniffing the other one's butt yes i said butt but you know it's it's something that they do it's a way it's less offensive in dog sensibilities <laughs> but it's less threatening that's the word i'm looking for it's less threatening to for them to uh to meet each other that way rather than going face to face and potentially something that feels confrontational to them. And especially if your dog is very um, excitable, well, just seeing a dog lunging, well, one dog lunging at another, that other dog is going to get nervous too. So it's not a very good situation. So if you're going to be um, having a party with all these dogs, probably give these dogs an opportunity to introduce themselves and, again, monitoring behavior. But... You know, I would say if they can get off the leash, let them off the leash. You know, if it's legal or anything like that. But um, you're also going to be guarding your resources, which means um, like anything that you're using there, make sure that the dogs are not going to be damaging it because they could actually damage themselves too. <laughs> so uh, I don't know. What if they're playing around with the agility equipment? Well, what if it falls on them? Well, that's, you'll probably hear some crying, that is for sure. But, you know, you also have, um, <laughs> have a dog that might be injured. You might also have broken equipment that you're going to have to pay for. Because, well, dogs are rambunctious sometimes, okay? And it's unfortunate that, you know, things can be broken. But, you know, that's also you being aware. Always be aware when it comes to your dogs uh, having a grand old time. Because... You know, humans get carried away. Definitely dogs will get carried away, too. So, speaking of getting carried away, um, it could also be, well, humans get carried away with this. Eating too much. Or eating too much of things that they're not used to. So, all these treats that you have for your doggos and, um, and cats, whichever... Like, those are not normal for them during their day-to-day -day life. It is going to be them, like, you know, just watching, I don't know, let's say I watch my husband gorge himself in, like, an entire bag of chocolate candy. Oh my gosh, he's going to get sick. Same thing goes for your pets. Well, I mean, especially if they eat a bag of chocolates. But if they start eating all these treats and, you know... <laughs> without any control whatsoever, their tummy is going to get upset. And you get to scoop what comes out of its, you know, its orifices um, uh, later on that day. Or very soon. Kind of depends. And that always gets into, like, the health issue kind of part, too. Where you, you don't know if, you need to make sure, actually, that these dogs that you're these pets that your pets are hanging out with are vaccinated and healthy because things can really get, you know, can be trans 
transferred pretty easily. And you also want to make sure that you're in a clean environment so that, you know, there's more protection. Like, there, there isn't going to be anything cutting them up or anything like that. And then this, it leads into the trash and the cleanup of, of your party, essentially. Like, you want to make sure that anything that is, um, that is harmful is picked up. You want to make sure that any trash or wrappings are taken up because, well, you don't want your dog eating that. You want to make sure that um, they have a clean environment to, do, to enjoy themselves every other day, you know, after this party. But it's, it's always hard to, well, it's very, not frustrating or hard, but sometimes it's just difficult for people to pay attention to, like, the safety issue because, well, it's a party. We're having fun. And then we take for granted, then we take for granted the um, impulse control of dogs sometimes. Like, a very well-trained dog, well, most definitely will be able to have that control. But then there are other, you know, dogs that are, you know, on average control. And then others that are below average control. And, well... It just leads to complete chaos and someone potentially getting hurt. But all of this, you can kind of hop onto uh, phytosavvy.com and you'll be able to find like their dog party safety information. And that's what I mostly use. And I'm already starting to kind of plan next year's birthday party for the animals because, well, I can't do one right now. Man, the social distancing really sucks. But, you know, let's move on from parties, because parties make me want to get to know people and get close to people. So why don't we talk next about sewer gators? Because you know I love me some sewer gator stories. <laughs> All right, we're going to take a break, and then we will be right back. Want to find out what movies to go see? Then check out the GSMC Movie Podcast. It's your ticket to the latest movies, whether it's a new blockbuster event, romantic, comedy, or action flick. This show has got it all covered. They talk some what to go see now. Don't bother. What's hot on Netflix and everything in between? That's gsmcpodcast.com backslash movie dash podcast. When it's all about the movies, it has to be this new show. Don't forget to like them on Facebook and follow them on Twitter. Visit gsmcpodcast.com for more info. We are back, and I get to talk about sewer gators, because, well, they're kind of awesome, don't you think? <laughs> so, just some background information on me. I am a displaced Floridian, living in the Midwest of the United States, and, well, I grew up hearing all about gators and how frightening they are. Well, they're not really that frightening, they're pretty chill. But, you know, you start hearing the the whispers of the urban legend of the sewer gator. And you're not really sure if it's real or not because, well, come on. Kids will believe in in almost anything, especially when they're pretty young. Unless they're my husband and he's always the one that's always going on about, well, I don't really believe that. Can you give me proof? So that's what I live with. I adore him. But I love the idea of sewer gators and I figured that for this part of the show you know since we had been talking about birthday parties and stuff for your pets I I just wanted to change the pace here so I actually decided to go online do a little bit of research well not even do a little research because I do know a lot about sewer gators but 
I decided to go to um, just a website that had a had something about sewer gators. So this website is the Florida Water and Pollution Control Operators Association. So I mean, pollution control. Well, technically, sewer gators are pollution to our sewers. Maybe. That doesn't make sense. But, you know, surely they, they're involved in sewers and uh, Florida water. So I guess that works out. But, essentially, the, the major thing is that these gators are crawling around in our sewage and they are, <laughs> and they're just kind of living their lives down there. Now, essentially, you have in New York, like, this is the one thing that I really wanted to go over. It's like one of the starts to the, to the, to the legend. And it was in 1935. So this eight foot alligator was dragged out of the sewer in East Harlem by a bunch of kids. And well, they found him by, you know, shoveling around a manhole that was covered in snow and they dragged him up with a clothesline, which was, well, eight foot long gator. You can imagine how much that weighs, and that must have been a very strong clothesline. <sighs> so, the kids ended up beating this alligator to death because it started snapping at them. I wonder why it started snapping at them. Hmm. But, the locals actually speculated that the gator had fallen from a boat that was carrying it um, through Harlem River, and it just ended up in the, um, in the sewers somehow because it just decided to swim on down there. And there was also this other idea, because for a time period, it was kind of like the cool thing for parents to bring home gators for their kids after their cool vacations in Florida or just in the South in general. And these kids would have this pet gator. And I don't know if you've seen gators, um, like baby gators before, but they're pretty small and they're pretty cute. But they get big. I mean, eight foot, kind of big. More so than that, actually. There have been like 12 footers before, and I guarantee you, kids cannot control a 12 foot gator. Not even like a four foot gator. So, based on this legend, these gators would get too big for the kids, and the kids would just put them into the sewers. I don't know how they did it. Some may flush the smaller versions of it down the toilet. Then others, they just kind of released it somewhere. And, well, lo and behold, gator sewers. <laughs> so, long, well, whether or not these um, gators survived at the time, like, well, nobody really knows because nobody really kept count of it. But <sighs> there have been a lot of a lot of stories about this. And this article references... Um, this book called The World Between Beneath the City. The World Beneath the City, yeah. And it was in 1959. Written by uh, Robert Daly. And he was talking about um, mostly underground utilities, but the superintendent of the sewer was basically talking about how he had seen alligators with his own eyes down there. And uh, how he had tried to completely remove these gators from from his place because well gators are pretty dangerous if you treat them inappropriately like oof i've seen again i'm referencing fatal attractions if you have not seen it and you are over the age of 13 yeah check it out i absolutely loved it um when i was originally watching it and well so this guy, the superintendent, claimed that these gators were were just kind of there, and they managed to just get rid of them. He doesn't. This article doesn't even specify how they got rid of it, but basically, this guy was thinking, well, these guys that are working for me, they're obviously drinking on the job. Surely, there's no gator or gators outside, you know, in our, in our sewers. And then he decides to go down and prove that they're wrong. And then 
oh my god, there is a gator down there. And I'm going to quote this because it's pretty hilarious. Had I been a drinking man, I would have poured myself a stiff one. (laughs) So, somehow he was convinced, though he was known as a very colorful storyteller, apparently. Um, It is still so hard to believe, I guess. But Daly's book was supposed to be fact, but the... But the story that the superintendent had told, like, really just threw it on its head and, you know, really showed an active imagination and hit really focused and permanently put this urban legend of the New York City, um, city sewer gator, like, on in our culture, pretty much. That's pretty cool, I think. And I know, let's... Let's just talk about some one little thing, though. I know it's about gators and stuff, but um, gators and crocodiles are very different things. You'll t- you can tell by their snout, and also the aggressiveness, and also location. So definitely on the south, you'll have alligators. It is a very rare, rare, rare thing to see a crocodile, and it's probably because somebody just let it loose there. So I just wanted to let you guys know that. Gators are actually pretty chill unless you bother them, as I said. And, um, I would say that they just kind of like chilling in the water. They might be, you know, they seem dangerous, but, you know, they're animals. They're wild animals. And what have I said about wild animals? Leave them alone. Let them enjoy their environment. Let them be comfortable in their own environment. (sighs) So, I don't know, if you want to learn more about, um, sewer gators, you're more than welcome to. I would say for sure that if you want to have fun with it, you can go to Snopes.com. And Snopes, I don't know if you guys are familiar with it, but it is basically like a fact checker. And it gives like the the myth or the legend. And then it gives like actual proof from from different sources about why it is true or why it is false. So I would definitely recommend I was kind of scrolling through this, the Snopes, mag- the Snopes um, page for the sewer gator, and I just wanted to go into this, but it was so long, and I was like, Ugh, I don't want to bore you guys with, you know, all these little facts and stuff. I just wanted to, you know, just rant and rave about a sewer gator. <laughs> but anyway, I would say that sewer gator is, you know, while it's not real, it is basically a wonderful creation of the imagination and hey maybe i'll go over another um legendary animal for um the next episode you never know it'll be very exciting but you know it is about time for me to go and i've already made you this promise that i'm going to talk more about um urban legends and and pets and animals and stuff so there's that But I think I've, you know, I've chatted your ear off enough, and I think you have all the tools, or at least all the knowledge, to create a fantastic birthday party for your pet. Maybe it'll be for next year. Who knows? Maybe it'll be later in the year, later this year. We'll see what happens. But with that, I will go ahead and say that, well, thank you again for listening to the GSMC Pets Podcast, and that was brought to you today by the GSMC Podcast Network. I would love it if you guys subscribed and wrote us a nice review. I always love, you know, getting feedback. And just, it's something that really helps us, honestly. And also, please, please, oh please, follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. That'd be amazing. So, have a wonderful night, and thank you so much. You've been listening to the GSMC Pets Podcast, part of the GSMC Podcast Network. You can find this show and others like it at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Download our podcasts on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Just type in GSMC to find all of the shows from the GSMC Podcast Network. From movies to music, from sports to entertainment, from business news to weird news. 
follow us on Twitter and Facebook. Thank you, and we hope you have enjoyed today's podcast.